Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to City Council briefing session for June 7th. It's going to be quite an extensive one because we uh, didn't have a meeting last week, so we're going to be briefing two meetings, uh, and there are a lot of uh, proposed changes that have developed just in the last couple hours. Uh, we're forwarding many of those to you. There's a few more that are coming your way, but you got a list of them if you're on council. Uh, but let's start with roll call. Council President Biggs. Here. Council Member Cathcart. Present. Council Member Kinnear. I'm present and my camera's not working, sorry. Okay. Council Member Mum. Here. Council Member Stratton. Here. Council Member Wilkerson. Present. Let the record reflect that Council Member Burke is absent. And I see that we have our friends from the airport here today, so I'd like to go to their uh, briefings on resolutions 42 and 43, having to do with uh, property sales. So, Mr. Crowder. Uh, thank you, Council President, and good afternoon, members of Council. Great to see everyone. We have two sales uh, under a joint resolution uh, for each uh, that we are requesting City Council approval on. Uh, we had shared the detail of the uh, land sales with council uh, previously, so I will just highlight them very quickly. Uh, the first is the sale of 4.46 acres to WearTech, uh, which is doing business as Grub, G-R-U-B, L-L-C, uh, to allow for expansion of their manufacturing facility located on Route 2. The sale price of the property is 215000 less $22,000 for airport acquisition of a 40-foot wide easement across the east end of the adjacent parcel to their property, which is also owned by the LLC. The net proceeds coming to the airport under this transaction are $193,000 even. The second transaction is the sale of 20 acres of property to King Beverage Incorporated. The sale price uh, is for $1,960,200. It will ultimately be determined by a meets and bounds description, but we've received that recently and feel that that is still an accurate uh, conclusion of the sale price. And of course, the sale price is conditioned upon the approval of the city and county and the FAA uh, land release process. Happy to answer any questions, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, Mr. Council President. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Um, great. All right. And then let's get to regular. So, Mr. Crowder, then I don't. You, you just briefed both of them, correct? So, we don't need anything more. We don't. Yes, sir. We don't need you back tonight. Um, so we'll now go to sort of uh, regular order. Mr. Ormsby, are you wanting to uh, brief the advance agenda first? So. Uh, yes, Council President, if that's acceptable to you and the Council. Yep. Uh, so we'll do the advance agenda for next Monday's meeting first. On the uh, consent agenda under reports, contracts, and claims, uh, first we have the presentation of an extension of the agreement with Airway Heights that the Council heard about at the committee meeting uh, this afternoon, and Marlene Feist, our Director of Public Works and Utilities, is here to present this item. Thank you, Mike. Um, as uh, Mike mentioned, this was briefed by the Airway Heights City Administrator and Public Works Director today. Basically, we're seeking approval for a one-year extension of the water supply agreement uh, amendment, actually. Um, with Airway Heights, they've been a customer of ours for some time and we uh, approved an amendment in 2018 uh, to serve them additional water as a result of contamination um, in their system from PFOS, PFOA contaminants. Um, as they mentioned, they are working toward a solution to replace our water ultimately, but they need to continue to have access at this point. So any questions for that? Otherwise, I think you heard a lot about it today already. Thanks, Marlene. Uh, next, we have a uh, proposed consulting contract with HDR to work on future capital facility needs. And Marsha Davis is here to brief this item. Good afternoon. Thank you. 
HDR was selected as the most qualified consultant for a, uh, cons a contract, engineering contract, to forecast future water and sewer demands. We need this information for both our uh, water system plan update and for the capital facility planning for water and sewer. So HDR has been selected uh, a contract of um, $200,000 with $35,000 of optional tasks for a total of 235000 The work is expected to begin next month and will end in 2022. As part of this, uh, the consultant will be considering, as our um, water demands, they'll be considering water conservation, climate impacts, densification, and changes that could be attributed to COVID-19. I have a question, Council President, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, the last HDR study that I remember, possibly 20 years ago, um, had forecasted a pretty aggressive growth for the water system. And uh, we were looking at having some pretty big increases in our rates. And so I just want to uh, mention in this scope with them if they would um, be asked to look at our urban growth area more closely uh, and our city limits more closely and not necessarily plan on some of the current uses as such as you know our intertie to airway heights. We ended up building a pipe all the way to Fairchild Air Force Base that I still don't think we've used. So I just want to be careful that they're, um, we're not overreaching or asking them. I think we've got a pretty good handle on it now with a new water plan, but um, I just thought I'd bring it up that um, we, we definitely want to look at what the possible is, but we don't want to just have that be the only alternative. I hope there's other alternatives. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Quick question. Uh, is this just measuring expected need or is it also going to involve some hydrology and, and looking at capacities and things like that? Um, this is just looking at the demand. We have a, um, the city has uh, two robust um, computer models for our system. We'll be using this information to update uh, both the water and sewer. We have, um, we're right now updating the existing water uses and, and calibrating our water model. So this will just be looking at the future. Um, we felt that we needed to get um, um, a better handle on what conservation could be and what our possible future uses could be. City staff is very qualified to look at what we've done in the past and project that forward. But as Council uh, Mayor Mom had said, that maybe is not the best way to look at this. So we'll be using this data then to um, determine what capital facilities will be needed. Um, for the water system plan, we have to project based on what our current water uses are, but we can also have a conservation uh, program to say, if we conserve, this will be the changes in our capital facilities. Did I, we, that answer your question? It, it does. And when would we get the data back? How long is this process going to take? Um, we are thinking we will have this wrapped up early in 2022 and um, with the capital projects to follow after that. Okay. Thank you. If I may Thanks. just layer in one more thing, Marcia, we have done such an outstanding job with new technology in the water department on our loss. I think when we started this, we were looking at possibly even a 30% loss in some areas, and now we've brought it way down. So I just want to, again, when you're just looking at historical data, you have to factor those things in, and I think we'll continue with that satellite system and everything to, to just really improve our water loss. So if we can include that too, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next uh, items on the uh, uh, pro proposed agenda for next week are uh, two bid awards, and Dan Bowler from uh, the engineering department is here to present these. Good afternoon. Uh, item 3A is the proposed low bid contract for the CSO 6, 38, and 41 piping modifications project with NNAC for $97,979, to which we propose to set aside a 10% administrative reserve. This project modifies the outfall piping of the CSO basins I just mentioned, 
and the locations can be seen in the briefing paper attached to your agenda item. The little bid from NNAC was about 33,000 or about 25% under engineer's estimate. One other bid was received and this project is locally funded. And seeing no questions, uh, item 3B is a proposed low bid contract for the residential chip seal project um, with shamrock paving for approximately $1.3 million to which we propose to set aside an administrative reserve of 10%. This project chip seals projects around town at locations which can be seen in the attached briefing paper. Uh, the low bid from NNAC was approximately 300 and 31,000 or about 25% over the engineer's estimate. No other bid was received. Uh, the most significant difference between the engineer's estimate and the low bid was due to higher than expected traffic control. I think um, the fact that it was over deserves maybe a couple of sentences of explanation if you're interested. The um, unfortunate fact is that as evidenced by the fact that we got only one bidder on this chip seal and the last chip seal project a couple of weeks ago. Uh, these are not popular projects with area paving contractors. Um, as we've seen the number of bidders decrease and the prices increased over the last couple of years. That's in large part based on some research we've done uh, due to the fact that chip seal contractors are set up to do long roads with minimal traffic, hardly any driveways, no trees and other features that are characteristic of an urban environment. Uh, we'll be exploring a couple of ways to bring that down next year um, so we can see if we can decrease, increase rather the desirability of these projects. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next, we have a proposed contract uh, to uh, provide emergency housing and utility assistance, and George Dahl is here to present this item. Yeah, good afternoon, council members. The um, item number four is to enter into a contract with BetterHelp together to provide emergency mortgage, rental, and utility assistance to um, households impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Hi, George. It's good to see you. Um, help me, I'm confused. Where is this funding coming from? Yeah, so this is coming through the Department of Housing and Urban Development HUD okay. um, Community Development Block Grant Program. So it was a special allocation that's provided to okay. communities through the um, Community Development Block Grant Program. And so once it's approved and they're ready to go, how long will it take them to be set up to take calls and apply with better help together do you know yeah um we're we're piloting kind of a new new process we're trying to reach out to some underserved communities that have had a difficult time accessing some of our services in the past so uh, we've been working with better help to get together and some of the community providers to make sure that we're really reaching those target populations okay. as you all know there are multiple um rental assistance programs that are running through the Community Housing and Human Services Department at this time. Um, this, this particular project is one of the smaller um, allocations of funds that we have at $2 million. And so we're really trying to use this to um, chart a new way of, of doing business with some of the underserved communities. So that's where we're really relying on better help together to help us out in, in that outreach and engagement. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, George, George, Mike, I'm wondering, so is this something that's passed through from the Fed to Better Health Together, or is this something that we got as a city and, and Better Health Together applied and, and they are the, the winner to uh, be the provider? Yeah, the latter. So it's, it's an a direct allocation to the city of Spokane. We're passing through to Better Health Together through this contract. And then what, what was that process like? How many applicants did we have to distribute the funds? Yeah, we had three or four, I think three applicants that they came through. Um, they were evaluated and reviewed through the Community Housing and Human Services Department's um, Evaluation and Review Committee. 
um, those recommendations were then forwarded to the, the CHHS board for conversation and then approved as a recommendation up to you all at city council. And, and do you know, sorry, last question. Do you know what the, the specifics were as to why they're held together one, one and not one of the other applicants? Yeah, really, I think it had had most to do with the, the MOUs that better held together had had lined up with some of the community partners and in, in how they had intended to work with some of those underserved communities. Um, that was one of the strong suits of their application. Um, it's also worth to mention that Better Health Together is is not taking an admin cut off of these dollars. They're using other funding through their organization to be able to pay for the admin, which means more more funding going out into the community, which was a big plus uh, for the reviewers. Great. That that sounds great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilmember Catcard, I'll just add to that that uh, Better Health Together's proposal was really targeting those communities that had been impacted the most, the BIPOC communities, they had those relationships, so they were ready to hit the ground running instead of trying to go with another provider who had to stand that up. And we know they're a good provider, but time was of the essence as to get that out and the trust was already built. And I know that some of those entities have already been hit hard with requests and uh, at capacity, so the need is great. Any other questions? Uh, next, we have a recommendation for an addition to the Spokane Register of Historic Places, and uh, Megan Duvall is here to present this item. Hi, good afternoon, Council, and I am going to apologize in advance. I have a new roof going on, and so there's a lot of noise here. So I'm going to go quick and hope that we can get through it. Um, let me share my screen. I told you it was noisy. It really is. Okay. So I also just quickly wanted to say thank you to um, John Moore, who I believe was a um, police officer and a photographer in Spokane. He and a crew of volunteers have done uh, a ton of new photographs for us. So I switched out the photographs. So something new to look at. So Spokane Register of Historic Places, as you know, it's our local program for uh, listing Listing buildings, um, it's voluntary. It does take the consent of the owner for listing. And it's the only way that we can really protect historic resources through the management agreement that you're gonna be looking at today. Design review is only when a building permit is sought. And this is how we offer incentives to property owners. So in order to be eligible, a property generally has to be 50 years or older, and it has to meet one of the criteria in our ordinance. We can list building sites, district structures, or objects. And these are the five categories. Category A deals with broad patterns of Spokane history. Category B, an association with a significant person uh, in Spokane. And actually our nomination today does include category B, which is cool. Category C, architecture, design, or construction, probably our most popular category. And then category D is prehistory or basically archaeology or some um, ability to inform us um, in the future based on uh, underground artifacts. And finally, category E, which is cultural heritage, um, when properties may have had some loss of integrity, but they have a different sort of uh, criteria that they meet. Okay, and then I will get to our property today. Built in 1910, the architecturally significant Eastman Heritage House at 1214 South Cook Street is well preserved as a hallmark example of the craftsman style bungalow. The Eastman Heritage House is eligible for listing on the Spokane Register of Historic Places under categories B and C for significance related to individual persons as well as for its historic architecture. The home spans a 65 year period of significance from 1910 to 1975. The home was designed by architect Earl W. Morrison 
He was actually known as Spokane's boy architect because he was designing South Hill Mansions while he was still a student at Lewis and Clark High School. It was constructed by contractor Emil T. Johnson, who often partnered with Morrison, and sold for $4,500 to the Eastman family. The home is one and one-half stories with a low-pitched gable front roof and widely overhanging exposed eaves. The front gable roof extends over a full-width covered front porch. The front porch is supported by massive square pillars made of ashlar basalt. Wide barge boards with cutout tail designs outline the slope of the roof and are supported by massive knee brace brackets. The second floor is clad with painted rectangular cedar shingles and the first floor is covered with painted narrow width horizontal clapboard siding. The interior of the home consists of a library, living room, dining room, master bedroom, guest bathroom, or guest bedroom, bathroom, and kitchen. The front door is especially noteworthy as uh, is especially noteworthy and unusual as it has a bay leaded glass window at its upper light. Woodwork around the doors and windows in the entry hall, living room, dining room, as well as the two half walled colonnades in the front entry hall, the box beams on the ceilings, the pocket doors, the fireplace mantle, and the dining room's hutch and buffet are all made of the finest quality quarter sawn oak finished in a honey golden uh, color. Floors are oak hardwood with inlaid perimeter strips in a Greek key design. The built-in buffet in the dining room includes custom leaded glass designs and a small library contains dark wood cabinets and more leaded glass. The second floor has three large bedrooms and a bathroom. In 1918, William and Sarah Heritage and their daughter Ruby bought the house from the Eastmans. Sarah Heritage was a celebrated pianist at Whitworth College and her daughter Ruby Heritage was well known as an internationally acclaimed soloist, voice instructor, department dean and distinguished music professor at different times in New York, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Mississippi, Spokane, as well as various European countries. The Eastman Heritage House is significant under category B as the home of both Sarah and Ruby Heritage for 57 years from 1918 to 1975. The Eastman Heritage House retains excellent integrity in original location, design, materials, workmanship, and association. The Spokane Historic Landmark Commission reviewed the nomination on May 19th and uh, recommend that it's eligible for listing on the Spokane Register of Historic Places under both categories B and C. Okay, that concludes my staff report. Let me get out of the share category here for you if I can figure out how to get back to my view. Oh, there. Stop sharing. There we go. That concludes my report. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Next, next we have two, uh, a contract amendment and a couple of contracts to for um, streets and Clint Harris, uh, the director of streets is here to present these items. All right, good afternoon, council president and council. The street department's requesting an, amend an amendment to a contract with Northwest Industrial Services to increase the scope of the existing contract to allow for debris transport and dumping uh, of, this, of the waste uh, where the disposal will occur. This is in uh, regards to the uh, January storm that we had and the cleanup from it. And so that should cover, we're looking to uh, recover some, some money from FEMA possibly as a result of that storm. We're hopeful anyway. Any questions for that? All right, uh, 7A, the street department's requesting um, approval for a contract with Intermountain Slurry Seal to perform arterial um, micro overlay work on Bernard Street at the cost of $89,796.80. And for 7B, the street department's requesting um, approval for a contract with Intermountain Slurry Seal to perform micro overlay work at a cost of $190,000 $238.50 throughout the city on the residential roadways indicated 
in the attached documents in the uh, agenda package. Any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you, Clint. Uh, the next three items uh, relate to the uh, Riverside Water Reclamation Facility and Raylene Jeanette uh, from the uh, department is here to present these items. Good afternoon, President Cuff members. Um, this first one is with um, Dundee Concrete and Landscaping. Uh, they'll be removing and replacing the old media for, um, uh, for the bio, uh, bio filters uh, here at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, for uh, $116,120. Second one is with is an agreement with Cummings um, Northwest uh, for sales and services on the generators. These are planned uh, maintenance services that need to um, happen on all of our generators. The generators at um, all of our pump stations, at almost all of our pump stations, and throughout the plant. Um, and at one of the state buildings. So that will be for that contract. Questions on that. And the third one is contract with Inland Empire Environmental Resources um, to supply the liquid uh, magnesium hydroxide to the to the plant for um, uh, from July 1st through uh, June 30th of 2026. Any questions there? Any questions on these items? Raylan, I just have a, on the last one on the environmental resources. I think this is one of the first ones I've noticed for five years. Is that standard uh, with this type of materials, or this is something different? No, the, um, th this is a contract that they'll use over the five years. Um, yes, it's pretty pretty standard. Um, it's a chemical we, we use every other time down here. Thank you. Usually they run, they run three years, and so it just caught my eye. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, then the next two items on the agenda for next week. First is the report of the mayor of pending claims and payments. Uh, and second is the uh, placeholder for the approval of city council meeting minutes and all of those blanks will be completed prior to uh, next week's meeting. And uh, would move um, to the... Uh, Mike, I'm going to interrupt, yes. interrupt you here just briefly. There's a bunch of um, agenda changes that I uh, wanted to get handled earlier, so I'm taking it out of order so that uh, Hanley Allers can then prepare the comment um, sign up sheet for people. So I'm kind of doing it out of order. Um, but there are, uh, just to follow up with people, there is um, uh, one matter the gun contract that wants to be removed. There's the resolution on every other day watering um, that the mayor asked us to do early enough before it can impact um, irrigation settings. And then there's the um, ordinance on the emergency de or the resolution on the emergency re declaration termination. There's a request to move that up till tonight. So there's a few agenda changes, and I'm looking for a motion to suspend the rules to adjust the agenda. So yes. moved. Council President, I have a question. Um, are you talking about tonight's agenda or this one too in, in another week? No, it's most of these are for tonight's agenda. One of them is set for next week and we're trying to do tonight, but it's tonight's okay. agenda. Well, we're going to have to suspend the rules anyway, so so moved. Yep. Second. Okay. Any discussion about suspending the rules? All right. All those in favor of suspending the rules, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? All right, um, so f I'm just going to go through the, uh, again, the changes of the agenda right now as opposed to substituting different versions. Uh, but there is on tonight's agenda, 
currently a special consideration for um, updating the contract for gun purchases and the police department has requested that we withdraw it. They don't, they don't need that extra value for the contract. They thought they were going to, but they don't. And so that's um, OPR 2021-0254. I'm looking for a motion to remove that from tonight's legislative agenda. So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Okay. Um, then we've circulated around a resolution on odd even watering and watering um, between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. that the mayor requested that we implement to support her putting it in utility bills and just us all getting on the same page. These are all voluntary, but they we've been, since we started this, we've been declared to be in a drought. And so I was realizing that nobody had filed it on base, including myself. And so I wanted to put, uh, put that on the agenda. So I'm looking for a motion to put it on tonight's agenda, legislative agenda. So moved. Second. All right. And Ms. Fister just indicated it's uh, resolution 0051. Uh, any discussion about adding that? All right, seeing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Okay, any abstentions? All right, that's added. And no, oh, then the other request I had was there's a resolution on the advance agenda. Let me get it. Resolution number 50, uh, terminating the local emergency declaration. I request to move that to tonight's agenda. Is there a motion to do that? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstentions? Um, and since I'm on that one right now, uh, I'll just move. Is, is there a motion to substitute a version? There's just a few little words that changed it to make it a little more clear that was circulated. Anyone have a motion to substitute? So move. Okay. Second. Okay. Yep. And it was the sponsors of it approved of that. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of substituting the version that we circulated to the clerk and council members indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstentions? All right. That is substituted. And Mr. Ormsby, thanks for the interlude. We'll go back to the regular business there. Council President. Yeah, Council Member Kefkart. Yeah, well, while we're making changes, I, I would uh, make a motion that we defer the work plan and take that up the same night that we take up the housing action plan and our prioritization resolution. Okay. There is a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. So uh, it's on the motion. Is there a discussion about that? Councilmember Mum, and then I'll get to Councilmember. I Shreve. would like to pass this. Okay. We're six months in. We usually do this in January. We can always amend it. Let's get it passed so we can get our planners back to work on what we need as our priorities. Okay. Council Member Stratton. I was just going to ask Council Member Capcart, um, why? Yeah, if so, maybe there's a version that I haven't seen, but the version that's in our packets is basically unchanged from the last which I don't think met, met our needs at all. And I'm not convinced that this will come back in a timely manner to be updated. And so I would rather do it at the same time so that we can make sure all the issues that need to be on there are on there. Okay. Just Thanks. a point of clarification, Councilmember Cathcart, we did get an updated version from staff not very long ago. And we, uh, I think. You sent it out before, but for some reason, it was a version Okay. So. Uh, Lewis, well, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll invite Lewis to chat for just a, in a moment, but 
we did circulate um, in the last 30 or 40 minutes the updated version. Um, it, I'm not saying that it's adequate for your desires, Councilmember Cathcart, but I believe it's different than the original one. But I'll let uh, Lewis Mueller maybe give us an update of what changes he made from the original file to what is um, it has been circulated. So did you say that it was just sent 30 or 40 minutes ago? I don't have anything. It came from Hannah Lee Allers, and it says budget change. It says lots of changes on tonight's with some attachments. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I just I just got it. It is. I'll tell you what time it was. It was at three thirty one. And it says packet as an attachment. But um, Lewis, I don't know if you're there, if you can tell us what you changed from the original to the one that you sent out. Yeah, after the City Council Plan Commission meeting, um, we added a line item in there to try to summarize um, what uh, Councilman Cathcart had expressed in his memo to council. And so there's an additional light item kind of tied underneath the housing action plan that adds a bullet point. I can, can I share my screen? Yeah, that'd be great. Actually, that'd be easier than us finding it. Hopefully you can see that. So underneath the housing action plan, uh, there is implementation of the housing action plan. We call that generalized missing middle housing. And then we added this uh, examine zone density and development standards to faci facilitate infill as a part of that joint discussion. Okay. Normally what happens with these is we generate a charter and we bring that back to council um, before we get launching on the project itself. So there'll be additional opportunity to comment on what the details of that are. Okay. So if I could ask Lewis, would yes. housing action plan implementation, would that be then the items that we include in the council prioritization resolution? Uh, because I, I feel like that was kind of what we had discussed in that joint meeting was that we would have an item on here that specifically addressed that prioritization and then we would approve a prioritization and that's what, what would fit into that blank. Yeah, I believe both of these are meant to be uh, summarizing everything that'll be coming forward from council. And there may be some additional items uh, as we've been talking among staff on things that we could help improve as part of housing. And we'll share that with council before that project. And council member Cathcart, I would just offer that when we hopefully come up with something that we have at least four, maybe five, six, or even seven votes on as far as the housing action response, that we can, in the same resolution, amend this um, work plan to capture. Again, we'd have to have enough votes to do it, but we would capture those. So I think we can do that. Yeah, if, if we're willing to accept that that's what the intention of that line item is and, and with the inclusion of the zoning and density, um, I can I can live with it for now, so I'll, I'll withdraw my motion if the second's going to withdraw. Okay. Um, since we're talking about it, though, um, why don't we go ahead and have a motion to uh, substitute uh, the the new the revised work plan for the one that was originally filed? Is there a motion to do that? So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstentions? All right, that's done. Uh, okay, back to you, Mr. Ormsby. Okay. Thank you, Council President. I think we're uh, we're just starting the legislative agenda. Yep. So the first uh, proposed uh, ordinance is an emergency ordinance uh, dealing with the adaptive reuse of historic properties, and uh, Mr. McClatchy, I believe, is presenting that. 
Good afternoon, Council, Council members. Um, this has been briefed, I believe, in the Urban uh, Experience Committee. Um, this is an ordinance that makes a couple of smaller changes to the historic reuse regulations, one of which is to expand the um, property to the property line rather than just the structure uh, when it comes to the structures that are um, that can be that are subject to the historic reuse provision of our code. And the second change um, gives the historic landmarks commission a greater role in the certificate of appropriateness for changes to the entire uh, entire property rather than just the structure. Um, this will, Council President, this will have to be deferred. I'll wait until um, we meet with Chris Becker about it because we did not notify Commerce about change to our development regulations. So in order to give them enough time under the GMA, we will need to defer this for 50 days. All right. Oh. Move to defer for 60 days. Okay. Second. Let's... Let me just figure out when that is. Did, is. Were we saying 60 days, was it? 60 days from June 14 okay. would be appropriate, yeah. Okay. By August. Okay, that would be to August 16th. Okay, so that's the motion on the floor to defer to August 16th. Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Well, we Thank made, you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm excited to get this in place. Uh, one of the things I've really been happy about are the businesses that are allowed under this and the, for the structure. And this will just give a little more flexibility for the entire parcel, not just the building. So that's great. All right. Continue, Mr. Ormsby. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council President. Next, we'd move to resolutions and proposed final reading of ordinances for next week. The first is a resolution uh, naming the tertiary treatment facility at uh, Burside Park Water Reclamation uh, Facility for uh, Mike Taylor and Raylene Dinette is here to present this item. Yeah, this is a, a resolution naming the tertiary treatment facility, um, the naming it Taylor Tertiary Treatment Facility. Um, this is in, uh, to honor Mike Taylor and all the work that he's done on this project, as well as um, what he's done throughout the community. Thank you. Okay. Very fitting uh, recognition, I think we'd all say. Uh, next is a resolution adopting a new city flag, and Brian McClatchy is uh, presenting this item. Thank you, Council Member, uh, Council President, Council Members. Um, Council Member Burke is the sponsor of this, and we have uh, our new flag. This simply adopts it, expresses uh, gratitude for the work of the Commission that put in so many hours, and uh, reminds folks about how many um, how many uh, people participated in the process. So, hopefully, I believe June fourteenth is Flag Day. So, it is. This would be a really good opportunity to showcase our new flag. Yeah. Okay. And my understanding is Next that there are person. some flags ordered, so we'll, we'll actually have the actual flags by then. So. And Council President, I think the next resolution, uh, not that it can't be briefed here, but is this the resolution that was moved to, the, to tonight's meeting? Yes. Let's, let's go ahead and brief it now that we're here, but it is moved to tonight's meeting, yeah. Okay. And so, again, Brian McClatchy is, is uh, getting plenty of screen time today. He's up uh, to present this resolution as well. Thank you, Mr. Ormsby. Uh, this, I, I think if you recall back uh, when the city, uh, when the mayor uh, issued the emergency declaration, um, our, our charter makes, or our code makes clear that um, city council confirms those uh, orders and, and may amend them. In doing so, the council amended the emergency declarations to provide that they can be terminated upon council resolution. And this resolution does, in fact, do that to try to get us from emergency response mode into recovery mode. But I don't know if council members uh, who are sponsors, Kinnear, Mum, Wilkerson, wish to say um, 
some additional comments about the resolution. Uh, thank you, Brian. I just wanted to say that we just want to let our citizens know that we are ready to go back to work uh, a full steam ahead as all of our businesses are trying to recover around us. The city needs to lead in that effort also. So with this emergency ordinance, uh, we are just excited to do that work and to remove barriers that were formerly under the emergency ordinance when COVID first hit. Thank you. Uh, I would echo Council Member Wilkerson. It was well said. I don't think we can add anything to that. And I do think it's, it's time for us to move, move on, move forward, and um, got lots of work to do. I think my comment will be that I think we were conservative and saved our money, but we don't want to not put it back out in the community. So hiring people, the hiring freeze, we, we have a labor shortage just like many other businesses do and we need to get out there and get the services back to the community. These are the taxes that they've paid and the city's on good financial footing and we can afford to do this and we need to start getting back to our, our regular routine. Great, um, thank you. Uh, next we've got uh, Michelle Hughes, our county director uh, presenting uh, an ordinance to create a new special revenue reserve fund. Uh, Michelle. Good afternoon. Thank you, council members. Um, this is just an ordinance simply relating to creating a fund to house the new 1% sales tax and the, the $40 million that we received this year for the American Rescue Plan. Is there any questions? I have a question. Yes. When do we anticipate that the 1% is going to be generated? So what's, what's the time period that you're going to see that coming in? I don't believe it will start coming in until July. Of and this year? Of this year? July of, yeah, July of this year is when it becomes effective, and then we won't really see any funds until two months later, which okay. is September. September. Okay, thanks. Michelle, did I misunderstand you? We're putting those funds and the American Recovery Funds in one category, or are no. they distinct? They are distinct. Fund 1595 is for the 1%, and then mm -hmm. Fund 25 is for the American Rescue Plan. It's all on its own. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, next we have a proposed ordinance uh, that, that makes a zone change uh, for some property out on uh, East Sprague Avenue, and Melissa Owen is here to present this item. Hi, thank you, council members. First, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, great. And if it's okay, I would like to share my screen here. I have just a couple of slides to present. And are you all able to see that? Yes. Okay, great. <clears throat> so again, my name is Melissa Owen. I'm with the Development Services Department. And I'm actually the planner that processed this type three application for a rezone. So some general information for you to start. So the applicant, Dwight Hume, on behalf of the property owner, brought forward a rezone application for parcel 35221. 0.0211, addressed as 4110 East Sprague Avenue, and that was for a rezone from Community Business, or CB55, to General Commercial 55, or GC55. This is a Type 3 land use application. Um, it required both a community meeting prior to any formal application for the rezone um, to the city, as well as a hearing before the hearing examiner. So this next slide is just a quick uh, view of the site. Um, again, this is 411, uh, 4110, excuse me, East Sprague Avenue, generally bound by Sprague, Havana, Pacific Avenue, and Myrtle Street. This is the former Kmart site um, that you might be familiar with along East Sprague. 
I have several slides here with regards to the procedural requirements, but I just wanted to point out I have a couple of bullets on this slide. They're in gray. This was actually a combined type three application that also included a conditional use permit for internal mini storage. Um, and so those, um, those bullets um, and the procedural requirements were required for that portion of the application, um, but not specific to the rezone. So uh, they did hold, hold their community um, meeting, our virt virtual community meeting on July 22nd, 2020. Um, we received the type three conditional use permit and rezone application materials on October 2nd of 2020. A request for comments were sent out to departments and agencies on December 1st, 2020. The application was deemed technically complete um, in January 2020. There was a combined notice of uh, application, SEPA, and the public hearing notice mailed and posted on or before February 5th of 2021. That initiated the 15-day public comment period. Uh, the public comment period did close on February 19th of 2021 for both the conditional use um, permit, SEPA, um, and that included the rezone application as well. A determination of non-significance was issued on February 26th of 2021 with an appeal deadline of March 12th. Uh, there were no appeals. There was a hearing held before the hearing examiner on March 18th, 2021, and the hearing examiner issued a decision to approve with revised conditions on April 5th of 2021. Um, that appeal deadline uh, was set for 428 of 20. Uh, 21 and again no appeals were received and the ordinance before you at this point um, was included with a consent agenda for the urban experience committee back on may 10th so my last couple of slides i just wanted to show you what the existing zoning looks like so you can see there in the pink with the brown outline is that community business uh, cb-55 zone um, for that kmart site or the former kmart Kmart site, it will be become uh, a U-Haul um, with internal mini storage uh, through a separate permit process. And here is the proposed zoning uh, general commercial 55. And with that, I'm happy to answer questions if, if you have any. Um, I have an opportunity to learn something. So a lot of times people tell us we can only do these kinds of changes once a year. So I'm imagining this is one that doesn't, that can be more than once a year. I wonder if you can just explain that to all of us. Yes, that's correct. And actually, I believe the last rezone that was a type three application came through in 2018. So these don't happen all that frequently. Um, when we're allowed to do the type three application through the development services office and with the hearing with the hearing examiner is when the underlying land use is the same between the zones. So when you have, in this case, the community business uh, designation, the zoning designation, and the general commercial designation, we're both implementing zones for the general commercial land use on the city's land use map. That is different than, as just as an example, um, someone wanting to rezone residential single family to a residential multifamily or commercial use. They don't have the same underlying land use designation for those zoning uh, designations. And can you also just tell us, uh, I'm assuming the owner of the parcel wants to do something different, and so what's the difference between community business and general commercial that they're trying to get at? Um, so in this case, um, the internal mini storage, mini storage in general, was actually allowed under both zoning designation, but the, the building itself did not comply with our current regulations. So part of the rezone was just to bring the site into greater compliance. Um, they did have to go through that conditional use permit process because they're a site over seven acres. So again, that was part of that type three application, but not something that become, comes before city council um, for the purpose of the ordinance. Uh, I'd say some of the biggest changes are around the size limitations for, um, for instance, industrial uses in that um, general um, commercial zone versus community business um, before you have to have another conditional use permit. So um, there's some other points in the process where if this were to change from a U-Haul and a mini storage and somebody was wanting to do something like an industrial um, project there, uh, depending on the size, 
um, that they were proposing, they would have to go through a separate process again as a conditional use permit. And I could bring back for you some um, more specifics on, on that if it would be helpful. That's fine for me. Thanks. Looks like Councilmember Cathcart has a hand up. Yeah, I'm just wondering, the, the two, it looked like from the map, there were two islands essentially left over of the CD55. And was there any thought to, to addressing all of that and making it all general commercial or maybe with the type three, you couldn't do that? I'm just not sure if that was that. So with, yeah, so with the type three application, it is simply the applicant is bringing us the request for the change and under our um, development standards and our type three process, they're allowed to make that change. Um, with hearing examiner um, approval. And so we simply didn't have applications from the other property owners. If they wanted to bring forward a change, they would go through the same process that the owners of the, the former Kmart parcel um, has gone through. They would come through that same process again as a type three application. Okay, thank you. Uh, council President and members of the Council, this completes the uh, briefing for the advanced agenda uh, for next week. There's one more, Mr. Yeah. Ormsby. The repealing the amusement devices, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. I think, I uh, think Mr. I mean, Ormsby was kind of sick of calling my name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a number of key spots on the agenda today, Brian. Uh. Um, so, no, we don't want to miss the amusement uh, uh, tax or device license fee repeal. So, uh, Brian, take it away. Thank you, Mr. Armsby. I'll be really brief. This has been uh, briefed previously to the council. Um, as the council knows, the, the city imposes mm -hmm. registration fees for pool tables and, ping and uh, pinball games and video games under the rubric of amusement devices. But during COVID, those machines could not be used. So we uh, worked with Councilmember Stratton to bring forward the notion to uh, repeal that and refund some unused license fees uh, during the COVID uh, period of time. About $9,000 of general fund of impact okay. per year. And a lot of crazy paperwork for everybody that we can get rid of that was costing more than the 9000 So thanks, everyone, for bringing that forward. All right, then, is there a motion to approve the advance agenda as amended? So moved. so moved. All right. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of approving the advance agenda for June 14th as amended, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Any abstentions? All right. It's approved. I told you this was going to be a long day. It's a long briefing session. Uh, let's go to uh, today's agenda, Mr. Ormsby. Okay. So on the consent agenda for uh, the meeting today, uh, we have the 36-month um, uh, leases on the automobiles, and Rick Giddings, our new fleet director, is here to present this item. Good afternoon, Council President, Council Members. Uh, Fleet Services uh, is recommending approval to lease five Hyundai Kona electric vehicles uh, for parking enforcement from Enterprise Fleet Management using source well contract 060618-EFM to replace vehicles that have reached the end of their useful life. Uh, monthly lease amount is 611.38 each for 36 months uh, for a total for three years of $110,048.40. Any questions for Rick? Okay, then next I would move to uh, a proposed value blanket with consolidated supply for uh, butterfly valves. And Lauren Searle from our water department is here to present this item. Good afternoon. This is a five-year value blanket with consolidated supply for butterfly valves. We have an annual spend estimate of $300,000 a year. Um, this is a new bid this year. We bid it in April, and we're, we're presenting this as a five-year value blanket with no option for renewal. Yes, ma'am. 
someone has to ask this question. Do they actually look like butterflies? The, the gate in it actually does operate. It's um, a disc that instead of going up and down, it yeah. turns sideways. So it okay. kind of looks like the wings on a butterfly. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the, the next item is a proposed award of a bid for uh, paving of the parking lot in the East Water Yards, and Steve Burns is here to present this item. Good afternoon, Council, Council President. Uh, this is the low bid of Shamrock Paving for the paving of the Water Yards East Parking upgrade. Uh, the cost of the bid came in at $700,139.80. And that uh, will be added with a 10% uh, administrative fee as well. Okay, I'm um, not seeing any questions. I'll move to the next item, which is a proposed contract amendment with one of our outside legal firms for specialized services in cases involving water resources and water planning. And Elizabeth Shadel from City Legal is here to present this item. Thanks, Mark. Um, this is a contract amendment for services by Adam Bradley of Van Ness Feldman. It's a request to add $30,000 to the contract. Um, Adam Bradley has represented the city since 2010 and provides uh, strategic advice and assistance in water-related issues. Any questions? Thank you. Oh. Council yeah. Member Kaplan? Yeah, I guess, do you have an example of something that, that, that uh, a consultant would be looking at? And, and I guess I'm maybe a little confused as to how this might be different from what we heard briefed in our uh, advanced agenda for next week. Uh, on the Van Ness Feldman, Adam Bradley contract, it didn't... Well, I, I, I just I'm, I'm a little I'm a little confused as to in what cases do we would, would this person would, would we need this person for I guess is what I'm trying to ask is there is there a case right now that, that we're dealing with that that we need this consultant to be looking at right so um, periodically the city has issues with regards to water service water extension water rights um, Mr. Bradley provides specialized um, legal advice and consultation with regards to water issues for the water department predominantly. Right now we're looking at um, for Canada's next on the list for potential adjudication sites and we expect to um, be looking at an adjudication in the next couple of years. So Mr. Bradley would be uh, primed to be able to assist us with that. Okay, that's helpful. Thank that's you. Helpful. Thanks, Libby. Um, next, we move to two items that involve uh, property, and I don't see Dave Steele on the phone, um, so I can. Oh, I'm here. Uh, are you? Okay. Sorry, yep, Dave. Yep. Sorry, I'm one of the, um, the call-ins. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. We don't get to see your face. So, if you could please <laughs> brief, um, brief item, items five and six. Uh, it, what order are they in? I believe number is number okay, five. Okay, the, the, the uh, Envision uh, lease is first, and then the Avista site master site agreement is second. Yeah, so the Envision, uh, we've got the Envision Center uh, lease, and this is the extension of the, sorry, yeah, the extension of the lease for another 90 days, uh, which allows our partners to kind of get all their ducks in a row. Um, and then going forward from that point, uh, we will have a, a renewed agreement where our partners are cost sharing with us, but this this keeps us going forward um, and allows the Envision Center uh, space to continue to operate. Um, it does leave us uh, paying for this portion um, with, uh, with the split coming as we, as we get the, uh, the revised kind of whole party agreement laid out with the, uh, the county and the rest of our partners. So. And then the sixth item on there is the master agreement with Avista for the charging stations. Um, this, this ties in with the grant they received. We have several sites that will be uh, part of the grant prob, uh, program, which will be 100% cost covered. 
And then all other areas under this agreement as we move forward um, will be 50% match up to $2,000 per uh, charging port. So if you have a two-port charger, that's $4,000. Um, and that would be then, you know, the, the Avista portion, and then ours would be the like portion uh, on each one of those. So it's 50%. So, sir, any questions on these items? Thank you, Dave. Uh, the Thank next uh, two, uh, or was there a question? Excuse okay. me? Sorry. Uh, next, uh, we've got uh, Kyle Tuig, our Director of Engineering Services, has uh, both an interlocal, proposed interlocal agreement with the county on some uh, software that both departments use in capital project planning and then also a contract extension for professional services for the capital project management software. Kyle. Thank you, Mike. Good afternoon, City Council members. Item number seven is the interlocal agreement uh, with Spokane County, allowing them to utilize our program management software, PM Web, that we have been developing over the past several years. Um, this was briefed at uh, the last PIES meeting and initially should bring in about $70,000 plus some additional cost sharing moving forward. Um, really good cooperative win for us to work together using the same system with the county for construction project management and capital program management. There's no questions. Item number eight is an extension of our contract with PM Web for continued professional services as we continue to develop out our system here. Uh, it's 18 months, um, estimated at $100,000. This is also going to be largely shared with the county. Pretty much everything we need to do for the next year and a half is going to jointly benefit them. And so they would be re reimbursing us um, for half of any of these uh, shared improvements. And Looking forward to moving this contract extension forward and um, opening up a couple of more of the advanced features of our system. Anything I can answer? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, next, we have a proposed consulting contract uh, paid for with a uh, Department of Ecology grant for analysis and design for stormwater separation. And Mark Papich is here to present this item. Good afternoon. Uh, this, this item is a consulting contract. It's with Osborne Consulting for um, analysis and design for uh, separation of stormwater along I-90. The limits are between essentially Hamilton um, and Havana. Total contract cost is $250,000 and uh, it's 100% funded through an ecology stormwater grant. Any questions? Then I'll, I'll move to the uh, uh, next two items. The first is a report of the mayor uh, for claims and payments, um, and also uh, reports or uh, payment of um, obligations for both parks and library, and then uh, figures that, that exclude parks and library uh, for the last uh, two payment periods. And then Finally, there are payroll claims proposed um, through May 29th uh, to be approved, and then city council meeting minutes as listed in the um, agenda session. And then if uh, council uh, well, would like, we can move quickly to the legislative let's agenda, just, although let's many just of take these a, items have... Part let's just go ahead and vote on this. We'll give you... Okay. We'll get engage Ms. Fister <laughs> for a moment. Councilor. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Could we set aside uh, number one and number three? Separately? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Report. Uh, oh. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. Reports, contracts, and claims. Number one will be considered separately. Number two, five-year value blanket with consolidated supply. Spokane, Washington for purchase of imported and domestic butterfly valves on an as-needed basis. Estimated annual cost, $300,000, including tax. Number three, low bid of Shamrock Paving Incorporated, Spokane, Washington, for water yards, east parking upgrade, $700,139.80 plus tax, an administrative reserve of $70,013.98 plus tax, which is 10% of the contract price 
Contract amount will be set aside. Logan Neighborhood relates to special budget ordinance C36059, which will be considered during the 6 p.m. legislative session. Number four, contract amendment with Van Ness Feldman LLP, Seattle, Washington, requesting an additional $30,000 for strategic and specialized advice on cases involving water resources, water services planning, and water rights. Total contract amount, including this amendment, $132,000. Number five, 90-day property lease extension for Envision Spokane from June 1, 2021 through August 31, 2021 with an option to terminate early, $48,960. Number six, master site agreement with Avista that sets the cost sharing structure and responsibilities for installation, maintenance, and repair of charging equipment in partnership with the city. Number seven, interlocal cooperation agreement with Spokane County allowing them to use PM Web, the city software as a service solution for capital project management from January 1, 2021 through December 31, 2023, estimated 2021 revenue, $69,339.56. Number eight, contract extension with PM Tech Incorporated doing business as PM Web Incorporated, Wakefield, Massachusetts, for continued professional services of the capital project management software from July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2023, $100,000 annually and 10% administrative reserve for each year. Number nine, consulting contract with Osborne Consulting Engineers to perform the analysis and design for the stormwater separation of I-90 between Hamilton and Havana, $250,000. $250,000 fully funded through an ecology stormwater grant. Number 10, report of the mayor of pending A claims and payments of previously approved obligations, including those of Parks and Library through May 21, 2021. Total $11,900,294.10 with Parks and Library claims approved by the respective boards. Warrants excluding Parks and Library total $11,267,816.06. B, claims and payments of previously approved obligations, including those of Parks and Library through May 28, 2021, total $5,368,911.39. With Parks and Library claims approved with respect to boards, warrants excluding Parks and Library total $3,024,874.71. C, payroll claims of previously approved obligations through May 29, 2021, $8,681,155.08. Number 11, City Council meeting minutes for May 17 and May 27, 2021. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda as read, excluding item one for now, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right. The consent agenda as read is approved. And now uh, matter number one. Item number one, 36-month leases with Enterprise Fleet Management, Spokane for five Hyundai Kona electric vehicles using source well contract number 060618-EFM, $611.38 per vehicle per month, total lease amount $110,048.40, deferred from May 24, 2021 agenda. All right. All those in favor of item one, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. Any abstentions? All right. That passes five to one. Council President, did we also set number three aside as well? Um, I thought I'd ask for one answer. I'm. I'm sorry. I didn't catch the that. So I will. Let's. If that's a error on my part, let's have a vote on number three, just for the record, so you can raise your. Point of view. All those in favor of item number three, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay? Nay. Okay. Any abstentions? Okay. That passes five to one. So if we could correct that in the minutes. Thank you. All right. Mr. Orms, be back to you. You're on mute. Sorry. Uh, we have a number of special budget ordinances. So Paul and Josie is going to present uh, the first uh, six items uh, that involve special budget ordinances. Thank you, Mike, and good afternoon, uh, Council President and Council Members. The first uh, special budget ordinance in your packet is PDF page 254, C3565-36053. This would create three fire communication specialist positions and it would be funded from uh, savings in the contractual services line. Uh, take questions now or at the end? Uh, let's take questions as they go, but since you're coming to the next couple of them, um, 
Ms. Wallace sent us a substitute for those parks ones. And did she send those to you, I'm assuming, as well? Um, if you could just explain, because it looks like we took two separate ones and then now have combined them into one. Is that, but anyway, if you could just explain that, and then we'll have a motion to substitute. Sure. So the, the next two uh, special budget ordinances, C36054 and 55 on PDF page 257 and 260 in your packets. Uh, the first one was uh, trans transferring $220,000 from general fund unappropriated reserves to the parks fund for their summer aquatics program. The second one transferred $160,000 from unappropriated reserves in the general fund to the park cumulative reserve fund to do the playground replacement projects. Uh, the substitute that I believe is being sent around uh, it combines those two to pour $380,000 transferred out of the American Rescue Plan Fund, the ARP Fund, to those uh, parks and park cumulative reserve funds for the same purposes. It just consolidates the two SBOs into one. Okay. And I have a question for Ms. Fister. Should we use 36054? Yes. Okay. All right, so there's a motion to substitute a new or special budget ordinance 36054 for the uh, packet ordinances of 36054 and 36055. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay? I have a question, Council. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, I just would like to check in with church because I started working on this next back in October of last year. That time we were looking at replacing um, the Cannon playground at a minimum of ninety four thousand, possibly more, and then um, replacing the the Logan Peace Park um, with I think it was one hundred and sixty four thousand possibly more for a full replacement, which is getting a bark place surface or the rubberized surface, that sort of thing. And I was just checking in with Garrett. Does, this seems a lot lower than we were thinking. Do you need more? Uh, thank you for the question. I think at this point we're, we are fine. Uh, we already moved ahead and got park board approval. So we've already purchased the two play pieces of equipment for AM Cannon and Logan Peace Park. So. We're well on its way for a later summer fall installation, but at this fi uh, point, uh, we're very grateful for the additional funding. But believe we can we can handle any addition any additions that may come our way. So thank you. Thank you. All right, and we were. I'm not. I just want to make clear of where there are any nay. I didn't hear any nays, um, and I didn't hear any abstentions. But if anyone had those, okay. So that's substituted, and. Councilmember Mom got her question answered, so continue on, Mr. and Josie. Thank you very much. So the next one is uh, Special Budget Ordinance C36056, PDF page 263 in your packet. This is $115,000 from General Fund Auto Appropriate Reserves for the Police Department to refurbish the uh, training range at the Spokane Police Academy. Keep going. Okay. Uh, C36057 in your packet is PDF page 266. This is the $1.1 million in budget authority from the General Fund Appropriated Reserves for the Cannon Street uh, Shelter for operations and some capital costs uh, through the rest of this year. Um, I, I think we briefed this, but can someone remind me what the capital costs are? Because it seems like we have spent a lot of money on capital costs after we bought it. So I'm wondering what the next round is. If there's anyone who can answer that? Uh, we are, we're searching through our notes. Okay. I didn't. So as I recall, and, and Paul might have more detailed information, I think in the, uh, the RFP process that's ongoing now that would possibly bring a new operator in this fall, that in order to uh, contemplate the changes in the RFP, there was some 
uh, expectation that there might have to be some minimal uh, repair or replacement uh, within the facility in order to accommodate uh, different uses depending on how the responders to the RFP uh, were going to perform the services. So I think uh, that was was a placeholder there to make sure that was covered. Well, I am, since Mr. Perkins is here, I'm going to just ask that we get a report on how much money we have spent to purchase the building and how much money we have spent on um, capital repairs and things like that because it seems like it seemed like a good idea good deal when we were buying it i don't know if it's such a good deal now and nothing we can do about it but it would be good to know uh in black and white what that is so but you can continue on council president would you like to defer that until you get that information no i think the vast majority of this money is for programming and it's just they just have that i i just want to do it so that when the next time we buy a building <laughs> well, we can tell this story. So I want to be able to tell the story. So, but thanks. All right, continue on. Thank you, Council President. And, and uh, just for clarification, on the one point one million dollars, we had assumed that eight hundred fifty thousand of that would be for operations, with about two hundred fifty thousand mixed in for for capital needs. So it wasn't specifically called out in the SBO, but that's those are the calculations we were working from. Uh, so the final SBO uh, that I'm here to, to brief on, C36058, PDF page 269 in your packet. This is a small one for $15,000 for a debt service slash leasing module to add to our uh, financial systems. Uh, it's split between fleet services and finance, and it's uh, part of an SBO because they are proposing to use some of the salary savings from the fleet services fund to pay for that $15,000 $15, side of it. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Armsby. Uh, oh, thank you. So next, I would the next SBO uh, relates to um, item three that was previously approved by the council, the the construction of the new parking lot, and uh, Steve Burns is here uh, to brief this item. Hi again, council. Uh, this is for ordinance C three six zero five nine. This is to uh, move. From unappropriated reserves, 1.172 million, uh, into a special board a budget ordinance line for the construction of the parking lot that was briefed at item number three. This is the uh, after the re, uh, the sale of the triangle property across the street. Uh, that's what is actually funding this line, and that's what's being used to construct the new parking. Any questions? And then, um, Steve, if you'll just stay up because you're next up again on uh, an emergency ordinance relating to uh, rates for water services. All right, this is uh, Ordinance C36060, and this is to repeal those sections of the municipal code uh, that are taken up in the uh, public rule that is now uh, published for uh, covering the uh, rates that were previously covered in this municipal code. And then, uh, ne then we next move to resolutions and final reading ordinances. And I think the first resolution, uh, Lewis briefed um, earlier. Yep, we did okay. that. Okay. And if uh, I, I've been asked, uh, we've got a, 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 a member of the general public here um, supporting uh, Kirsten's uh, presentation on Hoot Town USA, and they have sat very patiently through all of this. And if we, I hate to do this nope. to Eldon, but if we could no, no. move them up ahead nope. of, of Eldon. Uh, so uh, Kirsten and uh, Matt Santangelo nope. is uh, with her as well to present this uh, resolution. So take Th it away. Thank you. And and next time, Kirsten, don't let him sit in the audience so long to get it to our attention. Sorry about that, Matt, but I wanted you to see our pain, I guess, so that we can, so you know what it <laughs> is. So, uh, but welcome. We're super happy to have you. No worries. I, I had him on text standby, but as I saw the uh, agenda rolling through, I made the request at the last minute. Uh, so I don't really have much to say, and thanks for um, for considering this. Uh, you were all presented um, this information by Matt at the Urban Experience Committee meeting on May 10th. 
um, to designate uh, the city of Spokane as Hooptown USA and to support that messaging. So just um, if there's any questions that either Matt or I can answer, we are happy to do that. Okay. Um, Great. Mike, now we'll go back Mike, to. I, I was uh, just going to. Uh, Eldon has a number of, of items relating to modification of the Mike, uh, city's Mike, retail water service. Area. I'm, I'm interrupting. Um, I'm going to. Eldon's going to be here tonight, I'm sure, and he's going to explain all of these, and he's explained them already. Okay. So let's skip those because I'm sure he'll give an explanation for the audience tonight, so we don't. Okay. Oh, well. Um, well, let me confirm. Eldon, are you planning on being here tonight or not? Yes. Okay. I am. All right, great. Then we'll have you present tonight. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Okay, then I think uh, Larry Crowder has already presented his items. Yep. So we would go next to uh, Resolution 202145. And that uh, relates to the American Rescue Plan Act. And Brian McClatchy is here to brief this item. And before... Thank you, Mr. Ormsby. And we have Garrett Jones as well. And Council President, did you want to do an intro? Well, I just wanted to do an intro um, and maybe substitute before... Um, well, I, I just want to mention that we are going to substitute. I think Garrett's not going to present... Because um, we've changed, we've changed things up a little bit since he developed his presentation, but we have been in uh, consultation with the um, mayor's office. And basically, after our retreat on um, Tuesday last week, council um, made it clear that they they would really like to be involved in the front end of this rather than kind of an up or down vote at the end. So we changed up the language to have um, proposals can be submitted by people to the mayor or the council. But the full council would have some uh, study session meetings, essentially, and come up with ones that they have um, some momentum behind and send that to the work group. And then the work group's job uh, would be to uh, work on implementation planning, reach out to other organizations and work with them and really uh, get things tidied up. And then it would come back to council. So council would be the place that kind of like we do docketing committee except to be the full council of deciding hey are we really going down this road or not as opposed to what we had to do in the cares act when we didn't have much time and it was just fast so just wanted everyone to know we heard you on that we've adjusted it and um, i'll let brian talk about it but then afterwards i'm looking for a motion to substitute uh, the version that reflects um, this somewhat new approach but the same outcome Thank you, Council President. I think um, that really is the only change, um, I think, in substance to the resolution that provides four different um, purposes for the use of the fund. Um, it also makes reference to the Treasury guidance and uh, creates a, a rolling application process um, so that those uh, proposals that are ready to go can be funded when they'd be most effective. Um, Garrett and I have been working closely to make sure that we're coordinated between the council and the administration. Um, Garrett, did you have some additional things to add from your end of the, of the building? No, I'd just say we're excited to uh, move with the process. And I think when we look at the four purposes uh, within the resolution around replenish, looking at lost city government revenues and how what kind of impact we can make from a citizen perspective out of our certain departments. Also, reaching out, communication, and transparency is going to be a huge part of this as we work through this in the next few years. Also, is the resiliency piece. So that is the piece, the, you know, the big thinking, the big projects that really is going to make Spokane stronger, and a lot of that is going to have a regional re approach. And then looking at that, you know, direct relief to the citizens and businesses that either didn't qualify or missed out on some of the other relief early on or looking at innovative ways to reinvest back into our citizens in the neighborhood. So um, that's all. I just want to thank Brian for the, the collaboration during this process and looking forward to uh, reinvesting these funds back into the community. All right. So what, uh, any questions? What, what haven't we answered, council members? Yeah. Council Member Cathcart. 
Yeah, so just some clarity on the updated version. So is my understanding correct that all applications, proposals, everything will be filtered by the full council and not the work group? Correct. We, we, okay. That, that's you. the new version. I think I think originating is probably a good way to put it. Like uh, the council will be the originator and ask the committee, at least as I'm understanding it, to mm -hmm. vet and analyze uh, the proposal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Council, uh, City Administrator Perkins. Thank you, Council President. Uh, on behalf of the mayor and administration, I just wanted to avoid, weigh in that we are completely in support of this resolution. The mayor looks forward to the collaboration, not just with this council, but members of the community, both community leaders, other residents, citizens, and business owners. Everybody's been impacted by COVID-19, and there's a lot of pressing needs. And so the mayor looks forward to bringing all those ideas to the table, having a very um, open and uh, transparent discussion and a collaborative discussion about where those funds are in most need in our community here in Spokane. Thank you. All right, Councilmember Wilkerson. I just want to thank the mayor and city administrator. I think we just need to really hear that verbally out loud that we are in partnership and alignment on where we want to go with this. And for me, it was critical that we have community engagement around these funds because our citizens really can tell us where the needs are it's not always top down, it's truly bottom up, uh, and we can meet somewhere in the middle. So I am looking forward to the partnership and us moving forward. So thank you much, uh, City Administrator, for those words. All right, all that said, is there a motion to substitute uh, the version that we circulated a couple hours ago? So move. So move. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any clarifications? All right. Okay. And okay. since I'm the next uh, one the, next the, one up, I'll just go for it. Uh, yes, you're uh, uh, you're for the presenter of the proposed resolution on the financial benefits from the waste energy plant. Yeah, so we discussed this at PIES before, but um, we are seeking a uh, an opinion from the Utilities Transportation Commission that the city is eligible to enter into long-term power purchase agreements with um, Avista uh, for longer than five years, which the net the net difference would be more revenue to the city. Uh, and then we're saying the reason we would do it is so we could take that extra revenue and devote that to um, uh, transforming our waste to energy system so it has less greenhouse gas impact. Uh, but to be clear, uh, the power purchase agreement revenues are just going down. So it's not like we're going to get a windfall of money. It's just that we'll get more money than we would otherwise. Um, so, and I think we've already filed the petition, Mr. Ormsby, I think, but um, we have. And Avista is sort of neutral on it. They're not opposing it. They just are waiting to see if the commission will do anything with it. Right. Okay. And the, the next is a resolution uh, for the council to consider that regards potential modifications of the uh, transportation benefit programs and Shauna Harshman from council staff is here to brief this item. Thank you, Mr. Ormsby. Council president, council, this was Briefed recently at a committee meeting and very, very high level, we're looking at a couple of changes to how the Transportation Benefit District finances are administered. We wanted to specifically mention the plans that the projects are, are coming from, the six-year comprehensive street program, the pavement maintenance program, and the bicycle and pedestrian master plans. Um, in, in doing that and taking the dates out of the ordinance, we minimize the, the amount of staff time that has to go into continually updating the Spokane Municipal Code every, every time one of those plans is out of date. 
the second piece, though, is that the Transportation Benefit District is intended to have a, a, a discrete end date when we can look to something specific that we have accomplished uh, and set out as the goals of the Transportation Benefit District. And the previous way that the city was doing that was by looking at these six-year periods of the six-year street maintenance program and every six years going ahead and, and extending that. And so we have mirrored what many other jurisdictions across the state are doing and moved to a performance-based way of, of setting that end goal, saying that when we have been able to attain a pavement condition index of 80, where we have no streets that are below a rating of 25, we'll be able to look and say that we're doing a good job maintaining our residential streets. So what this resolution does is just set the, the hearing date for these changes of June 28th and happy to answer any questions. All right. Seeing no questions, okay. is there a motion to uh, accept the substitute, which um, inserts in there the phrase bicycle master plan, which was missing there? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion on the substitution? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor of substitution indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right, that's substituted. First and reading ordinances. And, <laughs> well, and, and these, as often happens when we have the meeting, the briefings right. reversed, right. these uh, ah. items were all briefed yes. uh, in the earlier session for the final adoption uh, proposed for next week. So uh, all right. they, we've already covered these. Okay. And... I've lost track here. Do we need to have a motion to approve tonight's agenda or not? Okay. I'm looking for a motion to approve tonight's agenda as amended. Indicate. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Abstentions? All right. Oh, my gosh. So this is the price we pay for having a holiday. Uh, but uh, thanks, everyone, for hanging in and all the presenters and all the time that everyone um, did. And we accomplished quite a bit of uh, maneuvering as well. So uh, please, please do grab something to eat, and we'll see you back at 6 o'clock. And we'll try to go through things as uh, quickly as possible while giving people a chance to understand and, and weigh in. So with that, we're adjourned. Thank you.